My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 80. Please turn to it. Page number 80 and today is our lesson number 28. Let's see what we have there. We have a coin here apparently. 2.34. Uh, uh, 2.34. We are told that we have a coin. A coin that consists of a coin that consists of one-fifth zinc, one-tenth magnesium, manganese, and one-fortieth copper. We are told, and the rest is nickel. The rest is nickel. And the question is very straightforward. The question is simply what fraction is nickel? What what fraction is nickel? So let's find out, shall we? Well, we simply add up the three fraction. So we have one fifth plus a tenth plus of 40 and when we add up the fraction as we know our first job is to find a common denominator. A common denominator does not have to be least common denominator just find any old common denominator don't worry about it and get going. Here since 40 happens to be the largest number it's very obvious that this times 10 times 4 is going to be 40 and 5, 5 times 8 is going to be 40. So let's multiply this fraction 1 over 5 by 8 over 8. Essentially we're multiplying 1 fifth by 1. 8 over 8 is 1. Similarly, we're going to take out 1 tenth and we're going to multiply that by 4 over 4. So now this fraction has a, fra has a, has a bottom of 40. 4 times 10. This fraction has a bottom of 40. They all have a denominator of 40. So we're done. We simply take the common denominator of 40 and here we have 8 times 1 which is 8. 4 times 1 which is 4. 8 times 1 which is 8. 4 times 1 which is 4. And here we just have 1. So we have 8 plus 4 which is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13, 13 over 40, 13 40 is what makes up the coin in the form of zinc, magnesium and copper and therefore the remaining one, the nickel must be whatever this is, 1 minus this amount. So let's find out, shall we? So nickel is 1 minus 13 over 40 and of course when we say 1, what we mean by 1 is what we mean by 1 is 40 over 40. That's the whole. So 40 minus 13, 40 minus 13 is going to be 10 minus 3 is 7, 3 minus 1 is 2. So it's going to be 27 to 48. Nickel is 27 to 48. That's it, we're done. That's all there was. As far as the problem is concerned, we are, we are done with it now. Here is my next question, which has nothing to do with the problem as it is given in the book. This is the bonus question I'm asking you. So listen carefully. What if instead of what if instead of instead of saying what fraction is a nickel, what if the question was asking what percent is a nickel. If instead of asking what fraction is a nickel, what if they were asking us what percent was a nickel? Would we, able, would we be able to figure out very quickly without taking too much time? Let's find out, shall we? Let's leave this, uh, let's, let's, let's leave this alone. We're going to make a note here that nickel we found out was 27.48. Let's do this part, the percent part over there. Well, it's quite straightforward. Look, zinc we are told, zinc we are told is one one tenth. One tenth is of course ten percent. Magnesium we are told, 
magnesium, we are told, is one tenth. Oh, sorry, zinc was one fifth. Magnesium, we are told, is one tenth, which is ten percent. Those two were very easy. What about one fortieth? Copper. Copper is one fortieth. Do you know what one fortieth is in percent? Very quickly, without having to uh, take an inordinate amount of time. One is very simple actually. We know, we know one fourth. We know is twenty-five percent. Of course, we know it. One fourth is twenty-five percent. Therefore, one fortieth. Therefore, one fortieth is just one tenth of the amount. It's just one tenth of the amount. So you divide that by one. Divide that by tenth. You take a tenth of that amount. You take a tenth of that amount. That's your one fortieth. This does not does not be very pretty. I'm going to write it here. So again, one four. Twenty-five percent was one one four. If you take a tenth of that amount, if you take a tenth of that amount, that'll be one over forty. One over forty should be tenth of that amount. Tenth of twenty-five. A tenth of twenty-five is two two point five. Two point five percent. There you go. And therefore, twenty twenty plus ten plus two and a half it adds up to thirty-two and a half percent. And therefore, nickel must be one hundred minus thirty-two and a half. We know that one hundred minus thirty-three is sixty-seven. So therefore, one hundred minus thirty-two and a half must be sixty-seven and a half percent. This guy turns out to be sixty-seven and a half percent. That's how we do it. That's one method. We're not quite done yet. That's one method. Now I'm going to show you a second method as to how to quickly find out a different question. We're done with this question. This question is all over and done with. Let's move on to a different problem. We are all done with the nickel. We are all done with the coin. Completely done with the coin. The next question I'm going to ask you is a very simple, straightforward question. They give you questions in the exam where you have to convert fractions into decimals, decimal into fraction, fraction into percentage, all sorts of things. So here's the question. Forget about all of this thing. We are done with all of this thing. The question is very straightforward. What if, some, if somebody were to ask you, what percent? What percent is 27 over 40? Or 27 over 40 is uh, uh, is. Uh, Express that in percentage, something to that effect. How would we do that? How would we go about doing it? Listen carefully, okay? We, we don't need any of this stuff. Actually, we don't need any of that either. We're done with all of this stuff. As I said, this is a brand new question. Question is very straightforward. What percent is 27 over 40? The key to, the key to understanding this question is realizing immediately, of course, and this is not earth shattering what I'm about to say. We know the word percent. What does percent mean? Percent means exactly what it says. Percent means per 100 percent means out of 100 so if you have 37 over 100 if you have 37 over 100 what is 37 over 100 as a percent well that's just 37 percent because that's what percent means percent means out of 100 in other words as long as the bottom is 100 we don't have to do any work we don't have to think about it 48 over 100 is 48 percent 12 out of 100 is 12 percent eight and a half out of 100 is eight and a half percent and so on and so forth in other words if we can somehow convert this bottom part into 100, we'll be home free. Question is, how do we do it? Let's look at a couple of examples, shall we? Let me, let, let's take a couple of simple examples before we worry about this part. For example, for example, if somebody were to ask us, what is 17 over 20 in percent? If somebody were to ask us, what is 17 over 20, convert 17 over 20 from a decimal to percent, that's very simple. We want the bottom to be 100 as quickly as possible. Well, the simplest way to convert 20 to 100 is to multiply it by 5. We can't just multiply the bottom by 5. We're going to multiply the bottom by 5. We're going to multiply the top by 5. That's all. That's it. We're done. Now, all we have figured out is what is 17 times 5. Well, 17 times 5 is not that bad. 5 times 17, well, we know 5 times 10 is 50. And we also know 5 times 7 is 35. So, therefore, you see, uh, this looks like it's 85 percent. It's not approximately 85 percent, it is exactly 85 percent. 17 over 20 is 85 percent. Let's do one more, shall we? What if somebody were to ask us how much is 3 over 25 is a percent? Again, we want to convert 25, the bottom 25, into 100. Well, that's very simple, multiply it by 4. Again, if you're going to multiply the bottom by 4, 
we must multiply the top by 4. And it turns out, 3 times 4 is 12, and therefore it turns out, it turns out that 3 25th, 3 25th is 12%. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. How about if we were to, if, how about if you were asked how much is, how about if we were asked how much is 12 over 33 in percent? Now 12 over 33 in the fraction form, to be able to express that in percent here in the real exam, listen very carefully, in the real exam, they would not ask you how much is 12 over 33 in percent, they will ask you how much is 12 over 33 in per, uh, approximately, what is the approximate percentage value, that's how they will phrase it, what is the approximate percentage or what is the approximate percentage value of 12 over 33, they're looking for approximate. The reason they're looking for approximate is because the quickest way to convert 33 is to multiply it by 3. The quickest way rather, quickest way to convert 33 into something that comes as close to 100, that's what I meant to say. The quickest way to convert 33 into something that comes as close to 100 is to multiply 33 by 3, which will only give you 99, it won't give you 100, but that's close enough. Hence the approximate, you see, hence the approximate. 33 times 3 is 99, and therefore 12 over 33 is 12 times 3, which is 33, 36%. Turns out, 12 over 33, 12 over 33 is approximately 36%. Let's do one last one. One last one, which is 9 over 7. Let's look at 9 over 7. Or rather, 7 over 9. Again, 7 over 9, we cannot find a, a, a whole number, an integer, to multiply 9 by to convert it to 100. It, 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 you're not going to find an integer. Again, we're looking for approximate percentage value. What is 7, 9? What is the approximate percentage value? What is the approximate percentage value of 7, 9? Well, that's very simple. Multiply top and bottom by 11. Because we know 11 times 9 is 99. And therefore, 7 times 11, 7 times 11 is 77. And therefore, it is, it is not equal to 77%. This is wrong. It is not equal to 77%. It is approximately 77 percent because you are dividing it by 99 as opposed to 100. That's what we have to do here. When they ask you what, what percent is 27 over 40, we have to ask ourselves what number times 40 will equal 100. Well, let's, see what we, well, let's see what we can do, shall we? We know, we know 40 times 2 is 80. That we do know. We also know, we also know that half of 40 is 20. We know that, don't we? Half of 40 is 20. Nobody's going to argue with that. So we are done. I need to erase this thing. I need the room, so I need to erase this thing. Just give me one second. Half of 40 is 20. Nobody's going to argue with that. And 2 times 40 is 80. So that's it. We are done. Which tells us, which these, these two bits of information tell us that 100 must equal 2.5 times 40. 2.5 times 40. As you can see here, 40 times 2.5. How do we find 40 times 2.5? Well, 40 times 2 is 80, as we just found. 40 times 2 is 80, right here. 40 times 2 is 80. And 40 times half, well, 40 times half is same as saying half of 40, which is 20. So let's multiply the top and bottom. Let's multiply the top and bottom by two and a half. That's it, we're done. Now all we have to figure out is what is 27 times two and a half. Let's do it over here, shall we? 27 times two and a half. How much is 27 times two and a half? Well, how the hell do I know? We're gonna have to do it out in two steps, just like we did here. Just like here. What is 2 times 27? You see, 40, 40 times 2, 27 times 2. What is 27 times 2? Well, that's very, very easy. I know 25 times 2 is 50. So 27 times 2 is going to be just 4 more because you got two, 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 two's extras. So that's 54. And what is half of 27? How much is half of 27? Do you know? I know half of 26. I know half of 26. Half of 26 is 13. Therefore, half of 27 must be 13 and a half. 13 and a half. And all together it gives us 67 and a half percent. 27 over 40. 27 over 40 is 67 over half percent. Because once you multiply it by two and a half, 
once you multiply by two and a half, 40 times two and a half is 100. And we just found out that 27 times two and a half, we just found out that 27 times two and a half is 67 and a half. And now 67 and a half over 100 is just 67%. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.